RougeRadio.com. Tom Halleck with the uh, CIS report this week. I'm joined by the information officer for CIS, Michel Belanger. And Michel, the CIS national semifinals are now set. Let's have a look back at the uh, games this past weekend. First, let's start off in Calgary, the Hardy Cup between the Calgary Dinos and the UBC Thunderbirds. I think if you look at the result, everyone's going to say, oh, my God, you know, what? That, that, that was a blowout. But that game was really close. You know, Calgary was only leading by seven uh, um, at the half. And, uh, you know, the game was tied 13-13 uh, uh, with uh, two minutes to go in the, in the second quarter. Um, what really made the difference is uh, when uh, UBC was trailing by seven, uh, I believe in the uh, in the third quarter, um, Billy Green, actually the uh, Canada West MVP and Heck Crichton nominee for Canada West, uh, Billy Green, who had such a great season for the T-Birds, uh, was intercepted in the end zone. It was actually a pass that was tipped at the goal line, and uh, so so Calgary intercepted the pass in their end zone, and from there that seemed to absolutely kill any kind of momentum or that 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 UBC had as they were attempting their comeback and uh from there Calgary just absolutely rolled in they uh, they outscored UBC 35 to nothing in the uh, fourth and final quarter to just uh, run away with it but um you, you you know what was most surprising in that game maybe from a if you look at the game from a UBC standpoint you know UBC a team that had beat Calgary the only team to beat Calgary this year in the final week of the regular season Billy Green came into the game with with the best touchdown passes to INT uh, interceptions uh, ratio in CIS he had 23 um touchdown passes if you include the uh, the the first playoff game against Saskatchewan against only four interceptions and he threw three interceptions in that game against Calgary so that was a big difference obviously yes he was held to a season low 175 yards on the night and only completed 10 of 29 Absolutely. So, so the Calgary defense did a great job. I mean, we we know we know how good their offense was, you know, especially their their ground game. But uh, their defense made a big, big, big difference. Uh, uh, you know, a lot of adjustments against a, a good quarterback like Billy Green, and um, and it paid off. And you know, speaking of good quarterbacks, uh, you know, how about Eric Dulesky in his first year as the as the starter? I mean, we know that in his his freshman season last year. Uh, he had to uh, be the starter for for almost uh, for more than half the season because Eric Glavich uh, was injured during the regular season, and he did get some uh, big game experience because he was uh, he was used by uh, head coach Blake Nail in the second half of the Vanier Cup last year against uh, against Laval. But Dulesky had a fantastic game, especially running. He set a CIS record for a quarterback with four rushing TDs. Um, in the same game and uh and you know through the air he was he was effective just you know conservative mistake free 9 of 13 for 112 yards one td but the big stat no interception and and i i think the the interesting thing to me uh when i look at the not only the hardy cup final but the four conference finals from this weekend uh you know you often hear that uh Big players have to make big plays in big games. Well, this weekend it was it was definitely the case throughout the country in all four conference finals. If you look at this game for Calgary, quarterback Eric Dulesky, four uh, four rushing touchdown, one uh, TD pass, and no interceptions. Uh, running back Stephen Lambala, 22 carries, 194 yards. That's an 8.8 yard average per per carry. Uh, that's the thing. If people people who didn't see the game are going to say, "Oh my God!" You know, how did Lumbala get game MVP? Dulesky had four rushing TDs. Well, it was Lumbala who would consistently bring the ball, um, you know, to the five yard line or to the ten yard line or to the two yard line, and then Dulesky would punch it in. So what a game by Stephen Lumbala! 194 yards. Zaleski setting the new standard for touchdown majors. It's it's amazing for any for any player to get four rushing touchdowns in a game, let alone a quarterback. Oh, absolutely. Let's go to the Dunsmore Cup, which was played at Telus Université Laval Stadium in Quebec. 
it was the Laval Rouge or taking the Dunsmore Cup. Well, and again, I mean, we we talk about big players and big games. Sebastian Levesque, uh, you know, if if uh, you think Lombala had a good game, how about Levesque? 197 yards on 17 carries. That's an average of 11.6 yards a carry. Of course, it never hurts when you have an 85-yard TD and a 40-yard TD. Uh, so two long touchdowns for for Levesque, but and especially the, the, these were touchdowns that that came in in big uh, in big moments. I mean, his first TD for uh, 40 yards came um, um, late in the first quarter as Laval Laval was holding a seven nothing lead. But you know Montreal was in the game. Obviously, it's only the first quarter, and then boom, you have Levesque who scores on that 40 yard run uh, with a minute left in the in the first quarter to make it all of a sudden a two touchdown game, and then especially his 85 yard TD. What a spectacular! spectacular run by Levesque. Uh, that came right after M Montreal uh, came back from the, br the break, and they, were, um, they really had the momentum in the third quarter. They really played well, Montreal did, in the third quarter, and um, they scored five minutes in to, to, to make it uh, an 18-7 game. They cut the deficit to 18-7, and then they were driving again. They were at the Laval 20-yard line, when they had a fumble, which was recovered by Laval. So, so then uh, in, instead of having an 1840, potentially an 1814 game, Laval gets the ball back and Levesque again, boom, 85 yard for, for the touchdown. And then that pretty much sealed the deal for Laval because it made it a uh, 25-7 after uh, three quarters and they kind of cruised from there. Uh, but what was most impressive for, for the people who saw those two touchdown runs by, uh, by Levesque, He wasn't touched. On the, those two touchdown runs, he went, he hit the gap, and then he just kept running. And when Levesque, he's such an explosive back. Um, you know, maybe, I don't know if he's the best running back. I mean, there are so many great running backs in, uh, in the country, but he might be the most explosive. Once he's gone, he's gone. You're not going to catch him. And uh, so great game by, by Sebastian Levesque. And then uh, you, you have to tip your hat to the Laval defense uh, as well. I mean, Montreal's a good team. And Laval, again this year, finished first in the country for least points allowed. I believe it's the sixth time in eight years that they uh, they finished first in the country for po least points allowed. And, you know, again, holding a team like Montreal to seven points, you know, you, you got to tip your hat to them. And it, w it, was, it was Laval. They, they extended two CIS record streaks with this, uh, this win. It was their 51st straight win overall at home since 2000. 2004. They haven't lost at home since 2004. That, that's pretty crazy. And it was also their ninth straight uh, conference title. That is also a CIS record. So, you know, again, Laval, you, you, you know, people, people say, oh, it's always Laval and they always win. And, you know, it's not really interesting in Quebec. But there are some good teams in Quebec. I mean, people, people forget that Montreal beat them in the regular season. So you have to beat teams like Montreal. They had to beat Sherbrooke twice. Uh, this season as well um, so you know hats off to Laval they they got it done and they're back in the uh, national semifinals yes one thing I really liked about the Laval defense was was the job they did against all-star running back Rotran Saint-E the Laval defense the, you know they've been ranked I believe this year was the sixth time in in the last eight years that they finished first in the country for at least points allowed And you know, once again, they again, you know, against a really good Montreal uh, uh, team, uh, they held them to seven points. So you have to tip your hat to them. Um, you know, Rotran Sene, the the, uh, the All Star uh, running back for uh, for Montreal, who was an All Canadian last year, um, was held to 60 yards on only uh, uh, 15 carries. So that's only four yards per carry. I think you know any team will take that in a conference final if you can hold the uh, the the uh, the opposing uh, running back to, to only four yards per carry. So especially a quarterback of the caliber of uh, a running back, I mean, of the caliber of, of Retran Sonnet. So, so, you know, great job by the Laval defense. And, and again, you know, you, you need, you need your best players to, to be their, your best players in, uh, in games like that. And, and for Laval, you're talking about Levesque on offense and their defensive unit. And, and that's how they won the game. Laval beats Montreal by a score of 30 to seven. Let's go to the Loney bowl. The, 
AUS final between Acadia and St. Mary's, and Acadia snapping St. Mary's hold on the Atlantic Championship. Yeah, and again, a little bit of a, a surprising result. When you look at the, the results from these uh, uh, from the conference finals, you know, you, you could say that they were all uh, uh, blowouts, which, which is a little bit surprising, but... Uh, uh, a lot of people have been saying when you talk to people this year, I know Acadia, you know, they were only ranked in the national top 10 at the end of the year. Uh, you know, St. Mary's was pretty much ranked all year, but people were saying, oh, you know, uh, Acadia is for real. And and they, they had played twice against St. Mary's this year, um, lost the first game 8-3 to three in, in terrible uh, uh, weather conditions, and then they had won the rematch. Um, so it wasn't for, for people who followed the AUS really closely this year. It wasn't that much of a surprise. Probably the 19 point win was, but um, that Acadia would come out on, on top, especially because they were playing at home. It's not that much of a surprise for for uh, anyone who followed the league closely. And and everyone I talked to in the last couple of days uh, was telling me, you know, it, it, whether it's McMaster or, or Western who comes out of the OUA, it's not going to be an easy game uh, going to play in the Atlantic against, uh, you know, St. Mary's or Acadia. Now we know it's Acadia. And again, I mean, we've, we've talked about the same thing. We, we talked about Lombala and, and Deleski, how big they came up for the, for the Dinos in, in their win against UBC and then Levesque against Montreal. Same thing with uh, Acadia and their win over St. Mary's, who came up big quarterback Kyle, uh, Kyle Graves, who was named uh, AUS MVP last week. He rushes for uh, three TDs, uh, finishes a really efficient 12 of 16 for 170 yards, no interceptions. If you, you, you notice a tendency here, right? I mean, all the, all the winning quarterbacks this weekend, no interceptions. So Cal Graves, a really solid game. Um, Zach Skibben also on the ground with 147 yards on, on 21 carries. So a really dominating performance by Acadia. Uh, they pretty much dominated every statistical uh, statistical category. I mean, first downs 25 to uh, to 15, but it's really in the rushing game. 315 yards to 71. And we know how good uh, St. Mary's is. I mean, St. Mary's has great players like Craig Laguerre and Devin Jones, who came back late in the season. Um, Jones was held to uh, 42 rushing yards on 10 carries. Uh, Laguerre, you know, did, didn't play uh, didn't play that much. So, um, you know, I, I, it's it's a great win for Acadia and and good for them. You know, they end uh, like you said, they end uh, St. Mary's domination. Uh, the Huskies had, had won the last four uh, Lonely Bowl, Lonely Bowls. So, um, good for Acadia. It's, it's going to be interesting to see what they what they do against McMaster because, as we know, McMaster is so explosive. So, uh, uh, but Acadia has been really solid on defense all year. So I think that's going to be a great matchup, and and we're really excited um, to go to Moncton for the uh, the UTEC Bowl. It's the first time that the UTEC Bowl will be uh, held in in Moncton. So I think that's going to be really uh, really uh, uh, interesting for us. In the in the Lonely Bowl, the final score: Acadia 39, St. Mary's 20. Now let's go to the H Cup final, the OUA championship game which was at TD Waterhouse Stadium in London, Ontario. I was in Hamilton this past weekend, and the Hammer was a little bit of a ghost town, seemed to me, because it seemed like most of Hamilton went to, uh, went to London to see the Yates Cup final. Oh, they, they had a great crowd. You have a good point. They, 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 uh, they had a great crowd at, uh, at TD Waterhouse, and a lot of fans made the trip from, uh, from Hamilton to London. And, and that game reminded me a little bit of the, uh, the Kanda West final uh, from Friday night between UBC and, and Calgary in a sense that it was close early. I mean, it was only – you look at the half, it was only 10-3 um, McMaster and, 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 you know, kind of a – 
uh, both offenses uh, were kind of struggling, which is surprising because Western was first in the country this year for points scored per game with, I, I, I believe, an average of 39 points scored. And McMaster was first for, uh, for most yards per game with an average of over five, well over 500 yards per game. So for that game to be tied at the half, not tied at the half, but McMaster leading 10 to 3, was a little bit of a surprise, but just like Calgary did against UBC, McMaster completely took over uh, in the second half. And uh, and again, I mean, I, I know where I'm repeating myself, and uh, uh, but, but big players in big game. You look at this game, Kyle Quinlan, uh, who was named the uh, the OUA All Star quarterback last week, uh, 16 of 24, 275 yards. Four touchdowns, no interceptions, and um, and who was his big uh, his big target? Michael DeCroce, who was named uh, OUA MVP this past week. Four receptions for 128 yards and two touchdowns. But the big play in this one, 102 yards passing play between uh, from from Quinlan to DeCroce and. Um, for the touchdown that is an OUA record for a playoff game longest TD pass in a playoff game ever in the OUA and it's uh, uh, second best in CIS history um, actually the record was set last year by Sherbrooke who had a 108 yard uh, TD pass last year but uh, what a game for both these players I mean Kyle Quinlan He's been on fire since he came back from a uh, suspension uh, early in the season. In the second half of the season, since he's been back, he's been absolutely fantastic for McMaster. So, uh, you know, I think it's safe to say that, well, first of all, it's going to be a great uh, quarterback duel between Quinlan and and Kyle Graves, uh, you know, in the uh, the UTEC Bowl uh, semifinal. But uh, I think you're looking at a great matchup between the uh, McMaster offense and the Acadia defense. Was McMaster over Western Ontario 41 to 19 in the H Cup? Let's have a look at the uh, UTEC Bowl and Mitchell Bowl games. Both games will go on Friday night. Yeah, so so if if you want to start with with the UTEC Bowl because we're just talking about McMaster, like I said, I expect a, uh, a to see a battle between you know the, the the great McMaster offense. Like I said, they finished first in the country with for uh, most yards per game uh, against the Acadia defense. I think a key to that game, if if the McMaster defense plays as good as they played against uh, Western. Uh, I think you have to give the edge to uh, to McMaster, but but going on the road, it's never easy, never easy to uh, to uh, go on the road to at this time of year to win a bowl game. So um, it, I, again, this is a really intriguing matchup. These teams have never met, by the way. It's going to be the first time ever that the uh, Marauders uh, face the Axemen. So uh, a lot of unknown. Against any anything can happen. I think at this time of year, when when you have two teams that um, haven't played against each other uh, in the season, uh, you know, obviously McMaster we, we, we won't be used, you know, to traveling to uh, to Atlantic Canada. So uh, I, I think that's going to be a really interesting matchup. And speaking of real interesting matchups, it is a Vanier Cup rematch in the Mitchell Bowl at McMahon Stadium. Oh, absolutely, and and you know what? Not you know not to take anything away from the UTEC Bowl. I mean, the, the, the Calgary Laval. I think a lot of people when when they saw the schedule this year and they saw that the Quebec champions were traveling to the Canada West champions for the uh, the Mitchell Bowl. A lot of people were hoping for a rematch between Calgary and Laval. These are two teams that met. Uh, twice in the last three years at this time of year um in 2008 they met in the uh um in the utec bowl in quebec city with laval winning and then last year they met in the in the vanier cup with laval winning again but but both of these games don't forget were in quebec city where where laval has been absolutely dominant we talked uh, about it a little bit earlier on the show they haven't lost at home since 2004 now they have to travel to calgary and that's going to be a different story. Um, I don't have the numbers in front of me, but but Laval's, I believe Laval's record in bowl games on the road is one in four or one in three all time. 
So Laval has a great, great uh, all-time record in bowl games at home. But on the road, it's been a different story. The last time they went on the road, actually, was in 2009 against Queens. Um, and they were defeated by by the Gales, who went on to win the Vanier Cup. So really interesting. Uh, you know, we all know the story of the Dinos, great, absolutely dominant in Canada West since uh, Blake Nill take over. Uh, they actually tied the record uh, on Friday night with their uh, fourth consecutive uh, Canada West title that tied uh, an old, old record set by uh, Saskatchewan back in the 30s. But... Um, but the one thing that's missing from, from for the Dinos is a Vanier Cup win. So they've made it to the Vanier Cup the last two years. They lost to Queens in 2009, lost to Laval um, in uh, in 2010, both both times in uh, in Quebec City. So they would love nothing more than to reach uh, once again go to the Vanier Cup and beating Laval along the way. Two dandy matchups in the national semifinals on Friday night. They'll be both on TSN and RDS. And the winners advance to uh, to the Vanier Cup uh, also on a Friday night, uh, the week after that in Vancouver on November 25th. And that game will also be live on uh, TSN and RDS. Terrific stuff. Thank you very much, Michelle. Anytime. Talk. Always a pleasure.